imagine that when something something happens, a moment of impact, a loss happens, we we actually not living anymore. And it's like our life is not bad, but it's not good either. Mm-hmm. So the life reentry model is a five-step process that takes you from that in-between place and back to life. And I call it mental stacking. Um, maybe you've seen this in the book. The, this process basically helps you stack your thoughts that allows you to um, rewrite the code of uh, <laughs> of your life. Um, and it really works. <laughs> it works. What are the five steps for our listeners who don't know this model? So the very first step is um, is kind of a cleanse. That's what I call it. And I remember doing this um, in the beginning, not even thinking, not even thinking that I should ever worry that this is, I'm asking everyone to reveal themselves within the group. So imagine, Eileen, if I asked you to share whatever is on your mind and to be as honest as possible. That's the first step. And Mm -hmm. that's a hard step. We live in a world that we hide our true feelings Mm -hmm. because we, we are not rewarded for being honest a lot of the times. So, um, so that's, that's the first step and a very important one Uh, without it, without the courage to cleanse those thoughts and write them out or verbally share them. Uh, A lot of my interviews, I actually uh, (laughs) do this live with the host and I know it's daring, but (laughs) we start with, I'll give you an example. If I was to share my thoughts right now, I would say something like, um, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm looking inside my mind and sharing with you exactly what's there. And the first thought is, I hope my internet doesn't come go down. And for those who don't know, my power was off. And and then the second thought that comes in, as I hope Eileen is enjoying this conversation. I hope she feels like um, she's getting something out of this for her awesome listeners. Um, I hope I look good. I hope my mic is good. So I'm giving you a very basic example. And right, just no filter what's on your mind. No filter, it's just honesty. And yep. in every conversation I'm having, I want everyone to know that it is the best thing we can do for ourselves and our relationship is to actually share what's on our mind. So that's the first layer. So what happens when we write this down and those, when you do the cleanse by yourself, the book has the whole process spelled out. Um, When you do the cleanse by yourself, you can write on a journal for as long as you want and make sure that you're not filtering yourself. Make Mm -hmm. sure that you're honest with yourself. Make sure that you're not judging yourself. And um, so so as you saw me say, I hope she's enjoying herself. I hope she's getting something good out of this conversation. If I was to go back, and that's the second step, and find what I call the survivor self, which is the part of our brain that is the fear center. That's the part of you, Eileen, that's keeping you stuck and in the weight room, protecting you from all the monsters outside. <laughs> because basically you've been hurt before. Anyone, if you broke up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, you, you've, you've been cheated on, you've had a, a difficult experience, experience, you're afraid to you're afraid to go back out again into into life. So that survivor self is keeping you stuck and kind of protected. Um, So we're looking to find the words of that in the cleanse. The survivor self. We are looking to find the mindset of that survival. So I'm going to show you which part of what I just shared with you is the survivor. And I always say to people, it's, it's great that people say, just write things down to release them the answers to all of your questions exist within those words. And if we just write them and close the journal or say them and we don't do anything with what we said, or we don't try to understand what's there, it's an opportunity that's completely wasted. So you go back to the words that I said, and I'm looking for the pattern. That's step number two. What is my fear pattern? What is my my doubt pattern? What am I saying that 
is not from my original self, my true self, right. my most authentic right. self. And I don't know if you you caught it what in what I said. Did you catch it? Did you think you could you could find it? I think it's the, a lot of them were fear-based. Like you're afraid the internet, like this is going to crumble because the internet's going to go down and you're, you're afraid that I might not like the conversation. And that's a fear of like, you wanting to please someone else and wanting to, you know, be liked. I, I, I get it. Yeah. Yes. So we all have those internal thoughts, those worries. And you're so good at this because you immediately, so my survivor self basically is asking me to check to make sure that whatever I'm doing is right by you, right? If it was my most wise part of me writing this or saying this, it wouldn't have sounded like this. Right. It would have said, how are you doing? How am I doing in this conversation? It's like going on a date, for example, and going on a first date with someone and all we think about is, Am I enough for this person? Yeah, yeah. Do they like me Ver instead of do I like them? Am I having fun? <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, is this is this right for me? And we forget that's sort of, that you are in a survival mode, and and we have to become mindful of that because it's so easy to go to the place like, gosh, I hope, I hope he likes me. I hope the host of this amazing interview thinks that I'm cr uh, creating great content, right? Also, it should be about, are the listeners getting what they need? Because ultimately that's the mission, right? That's, that's about helping the world. Right. But also, how am I doing? Is this right for me? That's the third step is to reframe that fear. So we take it and say, you know, is this right for you? Is this person right for you? And then we take that thought from that wiser part of us and we put it into action. And without that action, Eileen, um, the system doesn't work. Do you know that a lot of people actually don't realize they're not taking action up until this point? It was the most um, incredible thing for me to notice. Uh, people would be doing, we would be in week three, four, and we'd be doing all these things. And then we would come into the action mode place where now that we know what needs to change, we also know what action stems from that going forward. And people would, would struggle to not find the right action, but do it, actually take action and do it. So it's not just in our head in theory. So once you start to take action, not from the survivor thought, but from the watcher thought, you start to thrive. And that's the mm -hmm. final step where we start to live our lives from that place. And I have seen Literally thousands of people change their lives in the course of weeks. And it changes suddenly. It's, we go and go and go and do and do and do and say and say and say and change and uh, rewire our minds. And then all of a sudden, once we start gaining momentum into the right direction, and I always say it's not that you climb a mountain. It has to be your mountain. Don't jump and the net will appear. Don't just do without knowing that's the right direction for you because most of us live our life from the place of surviving and we don't even know if the dreams that we have today are the right dreams, Eileen. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I love this model and it makes a lot of sense to me because I feel like I love to journal too. So I think I, I do bits and pieces of this, but I love that you made it very step-by-step. Step. Like there's five yeah. steps. And like the way I summarize it is it's about being honest with yourself of how you're truly feeling and thinking and then recognizing what part is the fear and then what, you know, taking action on the part that's the true, the true self. Like I should be doing this and not protecting myself based on fear. Yes. And most people think they know themselves or think they know what they want, but imagine spending most of your life with the shoulds in your life, like I should be doing this. I should be going to this college. I should be uh, going after this job. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I used to live like that. <laughs> See, that, And I said to myself, she's going to get this because she's experienced that survivor mode until you found the right place. How, how did that feel for you when you, and, and by the way, what helped you you know, find the right place? Because it's such a difficult thing for most people. 
I think for me personally, it got to a point where living according to how everyone else wanted me to live, like what I should do and this and that, it just became so painful. Like yes. life was not fun. I, did, I lost the motivation. It just felt so, I don't know what it is, but it was so uncomfortable that I was like, I there must be a different way. Like there needs to be another way. And that's when I started journaling and really understanding how I felt and what I truly wanted. And I think if you take the time to understand, like to talk to yourself in that voice, you find the true desires within you. And then all it takes is some courage to just go for them. And someone to wit, did you have a friend that also kind of reflected that back to you? Sometimes the right friend can help, but most of us don't have that person. A lot of people feel very lonely in their journeys. I think I felt lonely in my journey. Yes, there were maybe role models that I looked up to, like other mm -hmm. people from social media that I was like, oh, that they're doing something very cool. But I felt like in those times, I felt like I had to go against the wave of society and my peers. I had to kind of fight it in a way. And it did feel lonely for some time because the people around you don't understand. But I think over time, they, they do, like people understand. And, and you realize that everybody feels this way, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I can tell you've been through this path because you just mentioned that some people struggle with your decisions at first. I call that a divergent phase in the model. So we basically experience a place where when we start behaving differently than what people are used to us being, uh, we start taking action and doing things we've never done before. Our families and friends start to react. And I want to say to everyone, expect that expect people to say, are you sure you're doing the right thing to question your journey? That's part of just part of it because they are also afraid of losing you and they mm -hmm. have their opinions about what you should be doing. But stick to that path and know that you know best, you know better than anyone else what is right for yes. you. The pain you've experienced in what I call the waiting room must have been quite something for you to be able to do this because most people feel the pain short term, but then they get comfortable in what they think they should be doing. <laughs>